Today I'm going to go through the process that we have for slip casting here at the CHS Art Studio. And I'll go through that really rapidly in a quick video for those of you who would like to uh, not read the steps. Um, there is a document that has all of the steps, um, which is about 8 to 10 steps in the process for slip casting, which is um, another method of constructing with clay where you have slip clay poured, liquid clay poured into a mold, and then you pour the clay out and you're left with um, the shape of the clay that's left inside the mold. So I'll go over that process. Um, we have some examples here, um, little vases, um, cups, um, jars, rocks. Um, some of these have been in a level two level for a while. So you can kind of alter this um, as you go, but you have a series of molds that you can kind of create. And um, I'm gonna go through this process. It does take an entire class, but I'm gonna try to get this video down for you in um, five to seven minutes. The molds here um, rotate, so they're not always um, the ones that you'll see here. Um, usually we kind of keep cycling them through from place to place. They are plaster. They're very fragile and breakable, so please be gentle when you handle them. They have kind of you know, been used for years and they get used up and when they break, they're um, not replaceable. If you've done this before in a level one, um, I've made slip casting before, something you can also do too with your um, slip casting is you can actually take and use a piercing decoration to it as well. So if you've made this um, project before in a prior semester and you want to make it a little bit different, um, you are set to go. So that's the process. It starts here and we'll kind of get on with the rest of the casting now. We'll look at this as a timeline for starting on this side of the uh, table and then working your way over to the other side. Um, some people work around the table, but our clay is slip, which is a different recipe. It's a low fire clay that will go into the plaster molds and I've selected this one here to begin with. So I've got two halves of it. Um, you will also need to have some straps to hold them together. But the first step in this process is to stir up the clay. Okay. You would wedge clay in the beginning. Um, but instead of wedging this clay, which is a liquid, we're going to make sure we stir it up because it will settle. And so I'm going to make sure it's agitated. I would stir for a couple, three minutes, even if you're doing this um, at the beginning of class. Um, once you get to the end of class, you won't have time to do this. So this is kind of a basic start to this. So that's stirred up. I have my um, straps ready. And I would stand up um, because you're not as mobile when you're sitting down. So that's a little advice as well. Um, they're kind of like a belt clamp. And the color goes on the outside, you just kind of go around the outside with the colored area, and then you kind of tug the belt, and then you just pull the little clasp over. And you may want to hold it up to a light source or a window just to make sure that there's not an opening here because slip is going to stay into the plaster. If it's got a way to escape onto the table, it will. So, all right. So, what you'll do after you've stirred the clay is you're going to pour your clay inside your plaster mold and then check the time, okay? The amount of time it takes is a variable, and depending on the size of this mold and depending on how much um, it's been used, it could, kind of, uh, it could kind of take a little more or a little less time. So I'm gonna place the uh, pitcher underneath here and I'm gonna pour in the clay and I'm gonna note the time. And it doesn't hurt to have a friend to help tap the table with a little bit of uh, a mallet here. As the liquid clay fills up the empty negative void in there, it's going to get to the top and you'll notice with the little shock waves that there's air bubbles escaping from the sides. Okay, noting the time, and I've already got a timeline going here, this is at 12.08. And um, as I'm doing this, the water within the clay recipe of Kalo N and the slip clay the water's escaping into the plaster and it's actually going to um, remove itself down. So at 12.08, I would give this um, clay that I'm working on now, I would give it about 12 to 15 minutes. And now that's a variable number. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. The longer you lift, leave the clay in there, it's going to get thicker. So keeping that in mind, I'll go back to that one. But this one here, I've already poured this one about... 14 minutes ago, and it hasn't been used a lot, but I noticed that it's actually gone down, so it's not a bad idea as you go through that time span of 12 to 15 minutes to top up the clay a little bit more so it's it's up to the very top. Otherwise, it could actually um, 
have a really thin lip or a very thin top of this. So I'm going to leave this one off to the side, which is now. Fast forward into time about 15, halfway through class, 15. You now need to move on to the pouring out. And pouring out of the clay is going to go into the bucket next to us. And what we typically do is we put a couple of sticks on top of this so that way your clay doesn't, your mold doesn't go into here. And you kind of want to pour across the edge of it so you can, you're just going to tip out and pour out all of this clay. Um, this also helps to have a partner. So the clay that's in there is going to pour out into the bucket where it came from as we started up. And usually at the end of class, you'll kind of leave this here for a little bit of time, but then you also want to um, make sure that you um, have your name on this or this is on your shelf because all of these look the same. So that is um, dripping there. Again, there's clay stuck to the walls, but the inside clay has been poured out. I uh, usually leave it till just about where the bell rings and then you can put it onto a shelf so you should be good to go. And over here, the final step in the process is um, this clay has been in here all day. It's been on your shelf. So what I will do is I will carefully undo the straps so somebody else can carefully remove the top part of the mold and you'll have the bottom part of the mold underneath here. And this is the slip cast project that um, was taken from this casting. It will actually look like this, but you'll notice there's a difference. This has got a lot of extra clay that you'll need to trim away. Uh, it, it's like when it has a seam here, you're gonna wanna kinda remove that so it looks like it wasn't made from a mold, maybe um, handmade. You also maybe wanna trim off all the extra clay at the very top lip of this, cause this clay. The final step for this, um, it is low fire clay. So the low fire clay, uh, it's gonna go in the low fire shelf at a lower temperature a cone five and cone or O5 and O6 and it should have a name on it because all of these will look the same and if I don't know who they belong to I usually just throw them and sometimes I don't catch them and they drop they break but then you can make another one um, when the clay is used up it usually um, you know it's non recyclable so if you have clay like this clay here this lip and stuff this clay does not go into the pug machine it's not stoneware this clay here has to be thrown in the garbage so that is the um, beginning and end steps of the process. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, thank you for watching.